Injuries are unfortunately part of the game. And we're going to talk about two injuries today in LaMelo Ball fracturing his ankle and being out for the remainder of the season. And LeBron James missing a key two-week stretch as the Los Angeles Lakers only are a half a game back out of the play-in spot. We're going to get into all that and more right after this. The number one place for your daily basketball fix, NBA Central. Hosted by the one and only CEO Hayes. All right, basketball fans, welcome to another episode of NBA Central. I'm one of the hosts here, Hayes, holding it down for C Dub Bobby Stevo as we get into the news for the day. And unfortunately, we're going to be focusing on injuries today. So we got word today that LaMelo Ball is actually going to miss the remaining part of the season due to a fractured ankle that he suffered. And this, you know, yes, it sucks for LaMelo Ball, who already started off the season with a significant injury. Only playing 35 games this season. This is after and the, considering the injury stuff that's going on with his brother. Now, I will say this. LaMelo Ball at least did play 75 games last season. And then his rookie season did play 51 and started 31 out of those 51 games. But injuries have been a part of LaMelo Ball's career as well. Not as drastic of an injury history as his brother Lonzo. But it is something to be said here. Now, the Charlotte Hornets aren't fighting for very much this season. We all know that. They were they aren't going to get into the play-in at all. They're the second worst team in the Eastern Conference. And this helps them in maybe their search of actually adding a superstar to play with LaMelo Ball that could end up being Victor Wimbiana. But there's enough concern there over at LaMelo. And hopefully this does not become something that is just plagues him like it did his older brother Lonzo. Now, LaMelo is, we all know, he's a borderline star, if not just a star outright in the NBA at this point. Somebody who can go in and get you 25 points per game. He does six rebounds, 8.4 assists on 41% shooting from the field. We know the player that LaMelo Ball can be, right? We know that. And, and while the Hornets have had a very difficult time at building the proper team around him, even in his three years in the NBA so far, um, it's, it's enough concern there that we're looking at, hey, let's hope that, this, that he doesn't have any type of chronic injury issues going forward for the rest of his career. Now, again, like I said, this does help the Charlotte Hornets, well, if they even needed help, in increasing their draft stock and their chances at getting that number one ping pong ball when it's all said and done in the draft lottery. And the Charlotte Hornets are probably going to need that. The Hornets, who, despite having years and years and decades almost of lottery picks, have never really been able to put together a team that has done anything meaningful, really, uh, in postseason or ne and never have been considered a, a title contender. You got lucky. You drafted your star in your, in your cornerstone of the franchise in LaMelo Ball. And now maybe, uh, you know, if you can get top five pick, a, a top two pick, not because top five ain't going to help them, a top two pick in either Victor Wimbiana, Scoot, whoever it ends up being, and really try to add some more talent to this team and hopefully develop and grow another superstar. And by that, then you can you can have this type of run that you want. But we all know, I love Michael Jordan. I'm a Bulls fan, but we all know that Michael Jordan is probably one of the worst owners in the NBA. But, you know, hopefully, prayers up to Lonzo Ball. Hopefully that he's able to recover from this and it's not anything that goes into, you know, where we start talking about him having an injury-prone career. But, it, you know, some of those concerns are there, and I'd be remiss if I did not talk about him in those areas. Now, moving on from that, LeBron James also has an injury to his foot that he's going to be out for two weeks. He will be reevaluated in two weeks. So it's not even sure that he's going to be um, able to come back at that time, even though he's made some progress, things like that. He's going to be out for a while now, and it's even more hurtful for him and the Los Angeles Lakers because right now the Lakers are technically a half game out of a playing spot, right? And, you know, with the improvements that they made to this roster at the trade deadline, I believe that they did that with the play, a play in at least in mind to try to do that. Now, again, this Lakers team is a lot deeper team now. And if, if Anthony Davis is going to be healthy, this team could still make up some of that ground. They're going to have to play well and lock in to do so. But they're going to need Anthony Davis, D'Angelo Russell, these players to be healthy, which both of those players right now listed as day to day on the injury report. But if though if they can do that, if D'Angelo Russell and Anthony Davis can remain healthy, when you look at that lineup that they have, D'Angelo Russell, Malik Beasley, at that point probably Austin Reeves or Troy Brown Jr. comes in place for LeBron James. You then have Jared Vanderbilt, Anthony Davis. I guess you could move Jared Vanderbilt to the three, slide in Rory Hachimura as your starting four. Then there's there's some things that they can do. Still got Mo Bamba there as well. Dennis Schroeder, who's played really well for them at times. This is a team that still has enough talent to where. If they come together and play good enough and are coached good enough, that they could probably still sneak into a playing spot or really kind of stay amongst that pack. But in an in area where we're 
We're heading towards the end of the season. We really only have six weeks left of the season. If LeBron James is reassessed after that two weeks and he's still not ready to make a return, at that point, we're talking about him missing half of the remaining games for the Los Angeles Lakers. So, you know, there's enough concern there. If the Lakers are your team and you and you hope to see them make that push towards the playoffs, there's enough concern around that that how much does this put that in jeopardy? LeBron James has already only played 47 games on this season. So, you know, we'll see. We'll see. And, you know, betting on Anthony Davis to stay healthy is always a risk and a roll of the dice as well. But as we go toward, and, and you know, like I said, the Lakers have way more to fight for than what LaMelo, uh, LaMelo Ball and the, and the Charlotte Hornets do. And if the Lakers do still and, and they can play pretty good, then, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll see. I, you know, I will say this, right? When you miss uh, LeBron James, you, you, when you're going to miss him for that long in that extended period of time, of course, it puts things into jeopardy. But I am looking at the Los Angeles Lakers uh, roster and saying, hey, there's still quite a bit of talent left on this roster. There's still, it's not all gloom and doom for them. Uh, they're just going to have to come together. They're going to have to uh, be well coached, and they're going to have to fight hard if they want to, to have a postseason life. And when you look at the Western Conference playoff standings right now, you really have Utah, Minnesota, and, and, and the Pelicans, the Golden State Warriors, who have shot up now. They are now the number seven seed after being outside of the play-in just a, a two, three weeks ago. Um, and that's how much things can change in the Western Conference. But the Utah, the Jazz, the Timberwolves, and the New Orleans Pelicans, depending on when the Pelicans get Zion back, those are all teams that the Lakers could pass um, if if they play well on the schedule. And looking at their schedule, you know, it, it can be a rough go of a schedule. Um, they face the uh, Memphis Grizzlies tonight. That's tough. The Oklahoma City Thunder, while not having a lot of wins, the sound of team that you want to overlook with Shea Gildrick Alexander on it. The Minnesota Timberwolves are next up for them. We'll see how they, you know, how how they continue to play. The Golden State Warriors, they have them on Sunday on ABC. And then you got Memphis, Toronto, and New York all next week. Those are all, for, for the most part, pretty tough games against tough teams. While a lot, some of those teams don't have a huge number of wins, those are still games that could be tough and missing LeBron James. So we'll see how the Lakers come together. And if they can go on that stretch and that run to stay Close enough to get into that play-in area. God forbid they play well enough to sneak into that play-in area, but they're going to have to be locked in and well-coached and execute for here for the remaining part of the season if they want to get into that play-in berth. You guys can let me know how you feel on all these down below um, and what you think on all the topics, but that's it. You can follow us at NBA Central Pod on every social media platform. You can send us any feedback, questions, comments, concerns, NBA Central Show at gmail.com. And then lastly, you can send us a text message and our voicemail, 773-270-2799. We are the number one spot for everything NBA related or soon to be as we continue to grow the channel. All right, basketball fans, I'll catch you guys on the next one probably tomorrow. Peace, y'all. This has been a presentation of the Breaks, Breaks, Breaks Media. 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 Media.